Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to focus on sort of a conceptual question. At various times so far in this class, we have solved equations, we have solved inequalities, and we have graphed functions. And although we've been sort of hinting at this as we've been going along, I want to make sure that we talk about how these concepts are connected uh, because actually they can give you a different way of looking at particularly the equations and in inequalities. So here in this graph, I have sketched the graph using a, uh, the program Desmos of the function given by f of x equal x squared minus x minus 2. Now we could have gone through the details of completing the square to figuring out exactly where the vertex is and so forth, but I just wanted to look at this really quickly. Now, earlier in the semester, we, I may have asked you to solve a quadratic equation like this. Now, the connection that I want to make is that this expression here is the same as the one defining the function. So really what we're doing in solving this equation is we're asking where is y equal to 0, remembering that y and f of x is the, are the same. And where y is equal to 0, we're really looking at the x-intercepts. So when we solve a quadratic equation, once 0 is on one side, and that's really, really important, the solutions of the equation are the same as the x-intercepts of the graph. So you have the graph, you have the solutions of the equation. You have the solutions of the equations, you've got a big step towards the graph. Let me illustrate this carefully here. So if I look at my function here, f of x, this one factors nicely as x minus 2 times x plus 1, which means that if you set the two factors equal to 0, you would have 2 and negative 1, and I just want to notice that those are indeed the x-intercepts. Now, when you're talking about inequalities, you might remember earlier in the semester we had a fairly complex process where we had to uh, solve the equation underlying the inequality and then look at the individual intervals that were created. If we look at this in a different way and recognize that what's written here on the left is the expression defining f of x, the inequality x squared minus x minus 2 greater than 0 is really asking where is f of x greater than 0, and that's really asking where is y greater than 0. So solving an inequality can be thought of a different way. It's simply asking for which values of x it, are the y values greater than 0, which means for which values of x is the graph of the function above the x-axis. So rather than doing all the work that we did earlier, what we could have done, if we knew, knew at the time how to do it, is we could consider the graph and we could simply ask ourselves, what are the values of x where the graph of the function is, uh, is above the x-axis, where the y values are greater than zero? And you could see it would be any of these x values here but not including the negative 1, because at negative 1, f of x equals 0. If this, in, if this inequality had been greater than or equal to 0, we'd include that. Between negative 1 and 2, the graph is below the x-axis, but it's back above the x-axis from 2 to infinity. So the solutions of the inequality is simply the union of these two intervals. Oops, sorry. Um, negative infinity to negative 1, union to 2 infinity. Notice there's no sign chart, there's no anything else. I'm simply looking at the graph and asking where is it above the axis. If the inequality had been x squared minus x minus 2 is less than 0, the question would be, what are the values of x where the graph falls below the axis? And that would be between negative 1 and 2. So that's kind of interesting. Let's talk about another one. Here I've graphed another function. Again, I could um, 
uh, go through the steps of completing the square to locate the uh, the x the uh, vertex, and I could find the x and y intercepts and so forth. But again, what I want to emphasize is that solving the equation x squared minus x plus nine six x squared x squared minus six x plus nine equals zero is the same as asking where is f of x equal to zero. In other words, where are the x-intercepts? Notice that this parabola only has one x-intercept right there at 3. So the solution of the equation would just be x equal 3, or if I write it as a solution set, the set containing 3, which might be a little better. And the reason for that, if you think about it, it when you factor this expression here, it's a perfect square x minus 3 times x minus 3, so you'll get the same value twice. You'll get a repeated root. So, solving the equation, as long as there's a 0 on one side, means finding the x-intercepts of the function. Solving the inequality, again, as long as 0 is on one side, that's important, is just asking where is the function greater than 0 in this case, or maybe I might ask less than 0, if I'm asking where is the function greater than zero, I'm actually just asking what are the values of x where the graph is above the x-axis. Now you might be tempted, let me erase that point, to say, oh, it's uh, above the x-axis everywhere, but right at that vertex, the value of, of y is zero. It's not above the axis, it's on the axis. So for the inequality, you'd actually have to say that the solution set is negative infinity to 3, don't include the 3, and then 3 to infinity, again, don't include the 3. Now, this would have been nice to know when we were solving quadratic inequalities a little bit earlier, but these connections are going to become incredibly important as we look at more complicated functions. Watch the connection between functions, equations, inequalities. I want to look at one more to show you something interesting here. Here's another quadratic equation that I looked at, and I took the time, and I don't want to go through it right now, I took the time of solving the equation using the quadratic formula, and this is what I got. Now, if the solutions of the equation are also the x-intercepts of the graph, what does that mean? Well, you can look at the picture and see. You can just look at the graph and see. If the solutions of the equation are not real numbers, if they're non-real complex numbers, that simply means the graph has no x-intercepts. If the solution of the equation involves an i, that means the graph has no x-intercepts. So there are uh, no real solutions. There are no x-intercepts. What about the inequality? Well, remember this is f of x. So we're really asking what are the values of x where the graph is above the axis? And in this case, that would be everything. The entire graph is always above the x-axis. So without doing anything with solving the equation or looking at test points, just thinking about the graph, we know the solution of the inequality is negative infinity to infinity. So that's a really nice additional thought. Uh, maybe just as one final parting thought, if I had asked the question, where is 2x squared plus 2x plus 2 less than 0? And sorry for that ugly plus sign. Where is x squared plus 2x plus 2 less than 0? That would be asking, where does the graph lie below the uh, x-axis? And you can see the whole thing is never below the x-axis. So the solution set would have to be just the empty set. It is never below the axis. So I hope that set kind of gives you a nice tie-in of all these concepts, and it will help you a lot as we continue looking at rational and, uh, and polynomial equations, graphs, and inequalities in the very near future.